This is NBK, nothing but Knicks. When Sim pass the assist, you know that it's number one show that breaks down the game. If you can't play defense, stay out my way. Dribble the ball, come down the lane. Five seconds on the shot clock, who gon' win us the game? You wanna hear Nick updates and trade rumors? Post game reviews, this the place you tune in. So tell a friend just to keep the ball moving. Like the page if you feeling the movement. Every game we come in to win. Give us a sob like a player that came off the bench. This is NBK, nothing but Knicks. Knicks family, what's poppin'? It's your boy. Ladies and gentlemen, I feel much better tonight. Much, much better tonight. After the Knicks just defeated the Sacramento Kings. Yes, they defeated the Sacramento Kings to snap a three-game losing streak. It didn't look too good from the beginning of the game, though. Jalen Brunson getting trapped all over the place. It was uh, it was tough from the beginning, but the Knicks found a way to crawl. They crawled back into the game and then dominated the game. They win 120-109 to 109 over the Sacramento Kings uh, to... You know, turn a rather groom, gloomy day to a good day. Because, of course, we got the news that Julius Randle um, is out for the remainder of the season to get surgery on his shoulder. You know, so, you know, that was, that was, that was kind of gloomy. And then it looked like the Knicks were about to get demolished. But they turned it around, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that's a beautiful thing. So we got a guest here today. Big Bubba's in the building. We caught him in the middle of a private moment. Cleaning his nose out, stuff like Go that. Ahead. But, you know, it's all good. We got him back in the building. Hey, Sim. Sim, between me and you, uh, everything is good. Everything's all right. Good, good, good. I'm glad. I was going to give you a call and ask. Good, cool. Yeah. So, uh Big Bubba, man, it's been a long time since you since it's been a long time since people have seen your face on this show. What's good with I, you? I know, man. Sim, you know it's crazy, man. It's not on purpose, man. I miss being on the show. It just this, I'm just you know I'm working a lot, man. Working and got my lady and you know just got some stuff going on. You heard what he said. You heard <laughs> what he said. He got his lady. His lady <laughs> said, "Ain't no more NBK today." But nah, you know, it's NBK for NBK for life. Y'all know she, she, what it is. She, she said, she nah, said, you forget know, NBK, been... read these books. <laughs> hey man, I've been reading. I've been reading a lot. I ain't gonna lie, I've been reading a lot, man. But you know, um, now it's really good to be back on. So I'm gonna try to start. You know, summertime, start trying to get back on so we do the playoffs and all that stuff, man. That's what's up. Um, but yeah, um, I mean, I, I mean, I'm really happy to be back. Yeah, listen, listen, listen. Everybody's going through, I'm, you know, the past eight months, I've been going through some life-changing things. Um, so that's the reason why I haven't been as consistent with the show like I normally would. You know, just, you know, you you know, you know what's going on. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. You know, it's I not know. something I'm fully ready to just put out to the public. But, um, you know, going through some serious life-changing uh, things that have, uh, you know, just changed the way that I had to approach things. For right now, but uh, you know, I plan on getting back as soon as things settle in. Plan on getting back to my normal schedule and even more because I have a little bit more time now, you know. Um, but everybody's going through a little bit of something right now. Yeah, like, you got dudes in the chat talking about how my girl wearing the pants in a relationship. I, I, I kind of <laughs> agree with that. I agree with that. You see, first of all, <laughs> you don't wear the pants in a relationship, guys. You got to stop it. Yeah, I I'm, agree I'm, with I'm that. I'm the big boss over Hey, here. I've seen you two in person, so <laughs> that's all I got to say. I know I know uh, who wears the pants in the relationship. I've seen you two in, per- in person. So I know, who wears, I know who wears the pants in that relationship. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this lady, this man can't build anything. She made him build a bookshelf. So you know who wears the pants in that relationship. You know what I mean? Look. First of all. Go ahead. All right. Here you go. Here you go. Anyways, like I said, it's good to be back, man. But Sam, um, what a game. Oh, I'm talking about I me. Mean, I text you, I text you during uh we was down like 21. I'm like, this is just this is just terrible. I mean, you got the news today with Randall and 
I think that just deflated a lot. I, listen, listen, Sam. I'm gonna say it because I'm man enough. It's gonna hurt us a lot. It's gonna Without hurt that. a lot. It's gonna hurt a lot. Yeah. Um, but you know what though, man? I'm proud of the Knicks. I, I'm, I thought that you know, second corner, we down by 21. Bad news all day. I'm like, the Knicks is gonna go home. Just take the L. But we fought, man. We, we fought. Came back and we and we beat them. We swept the Kings this season. Yeah. And uh, I'm proud of the team. We said we needed that. After the last three games, you know, we had that controversial call. And you know the 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 foul, you know the the refs in San Antonio, the 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 non call with Brunson on the last shot against the Thunder, then we just got Molly by the Heat. We needed to get, we needed this win, Sim, just to keep it alive. And then you know, shout out, and also shout out to the Heat. They you no know, shout out to the Sixers. They beat the they beat the Heat tonight. It's a great win, man. I'm I'm, I'm super excited, man. Yeah, yeah, big big win tonight. Uh, listen, you know about Julius Randle. You know, uh, I guess the only thing that I can take from it, the only positive that I can take from Julius Randle being, um, you know, going to uh, 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 get surgery is that the Knicks can now just like, they don't have to be in a holding pattern, I think. They can settle in. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and, you know, listen, you the Knicks needed Julius Randle, I think, to advance, to advance, you know, to advance in the playoffs far, to go deep in the playoffs. They needed Julius Randle. There's no doubt about that. Um, but it's not going to happen. He's not going to be there. So now I think Tom Thibodeau, instead of, you know, kind of, you know, trying to have a holding pattern, he can maybe settle in a little bit more and say, okay, this is what we have to do now. You know what I'm saying? Instead of like, okay, let's jerk around the rotation this way or that way. Let's settle in on this. I think, I think, I think he should now expand Bogdanovich's role more. I think I feel like, and maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like he didn't want to expand his role, maybe because he was holding out for Julius Randle. Right? So let me not expand this guy's role too much because when Randle comes back, his role is going to be more limited. You know what I'm saying? Now and we lost you on we lost you on camera, big bubba, big bubba, and now it's like, okay, well let me, uh, we don't have Randall, so now let me expand this guy's role a little bit more, you know. So I'm I'm hoping that is at least a little bit of a silver lining when it comes to Julius Randall uh, getting surgery. You know what I mean? Uh, you know that, that's only that's the only silver lining that I can see. You know what I mean? What do you think about that, Big Bubba? Then I'm going to come to Trey. Trey, I hear you on the line. I got you, baby. Man, Sam, when, when it comes to... You know what, Sam, I, I thought about it because I I, read, I heard what Randall said. He tried everything in his power to come back. Mm -hmm. You know, I think he exhausted everything. So I'm not... I, I hope there's not... Sam, I'll be honest with you. I hope there's no Nick fan that really try to blame Randall or anything like that. Oh, they because already have. I've already seen it. They already have. They already like. Oh, I, I, I've seen people. Some people say, "Oh, he's soft." Uh, you know, he he should. Oh, wow. he, oh, you know, whatever. I've seen people say, "Well, he should have got the surgery right from the beginning," and maybe so. But he was trying to get back. He wanted to get back because yeah, the no, surgery, anyway, play. surgery Listen. was going to end. It, you know, people. I think some people maybe speculate. Well, if he would have got surgery right from the beginning, maybe he would be back by the playoffs. I don't think so. I think nah. if he, you know if he nah. got surgery, then he would have been out for the season. So that's what I think. So so Sim, uh, it so is it's crazy it is. that we you say that because I was talking to one of the guys on my job who's a Knicks fan. Shout out to my guy Benji, big time. He listens to the show a lot too, Sim. All right, big Benji. Time. Shout out to my brother Benji. Shout out Benji. Um, big shout out to you. He brother. had shoulders. He had shoulder surgery. And mind you, Sim, the dude's like, I won't lie to you. He's almost like maybe like two or three inches shorter than Randall. Uh huh. Yeah, he was like, it took him nine months to get back. And he was an athlete. You know what I'm saying? And uh, when it came to him, he was like, yo, he was going to get surgery regardless, either way. It just it was more of a matter of when. So, you know, with, with that, I understand Randall. So anybody that's calling him soft, man, stop it, man. Yeah. Let's st stop that now. 
And people know how I felt about Randall for a long time. Mm -hmm. But we got to stop that because, you know, Randall really tried his best to come back. You know, and he was going to get surgery after the playoffs anyway. So, you know, I'm happy he have it now so he could. Because my thing with this sim is that I'm happy he's having it now because, boom, he should be probably be, he should probably be ready by early June, maybe mid-July, so he can actually get some basketball training in mm -hmm. versus him just, you know, having the surgery and then him just rehabbing. Um, but, again, I do agree to I think Boogie should. Boogie should be more implemented implemented into the lineups. So now that, cause now that we officially know that Randall's not coming back and uh, let's get him more minutes. Cause I think he played, he played great tonight. He had, he had some, he had some big shots and he created it alone because I think that's what's really missing from our lineups right now is the guys that can put, that can put the ball on the floor and create their own shots. Right, 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 right. And, and, you know, Tom Thibodeau's just going to have to get used to him. He can, listen, he can, he's not going to be Julius Randall. But he can really add another layer to the offense, uh, another guy that can be a threat. You know, uh, I think right now Tom Thibodeau is happy with the small lineup that he's using. It's very small, but, you know, it is scrappy. It is aggressive defensively, you know. Uh, so I think he's happy with that lineup, but he's going to have to find ways now to really use Bogdanovich, I think, you know, in, in Randall's absence. You know, and, uh, you know, hopefully OG can come back. You know, and then when OG comes back, he's going to have to figure out ways uh, to utilize OG. And, and, you know, OG's wanted to have uh, um, a bigger role in the offense when he was in Toronto. He's going to have the chance now. And you're off the screen, Big Bubba. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. For those who uh, have always been here, you know, uh, uh. when Big Bubba gets on the show, there's going to be about 25 times <laughs> that I have to correct them. Right, you see me. I'm nice and centered in the screen. My head, you can see my head. This and that. You see, he's not centered in the screen. He's crooked. You see, his head is off the board. All of that. It is. No, you know, no, what, no, what can no, I do so about saying, it? I'm sorry, Sam. Real quick, I just wanted to read the super chat. That's that's my coworker that sends you the super chat. Okay. All right. Let me see. Let's get it up here on the screen. Uh, Mr. Jason Benjamin, Big Bubble. What's up? It's Benji. Big win tonight. Mr. Benjamin, we thank you. Please get this. Will you please get this dude right, <laughs> Benjamin? I've tried for the last five years to get this dude straight. No, he's like can't get right off of the movie Life. <laughs> Listen, Benji. Benji's like Benji's big bro, man. He'll, he'll get me right, man. Benji's big bro. He'll get me right, man. <laughs> get this guy right, please. Hey, 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 Sam. You know it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a show MBK, MBK show without me messing up on the camera. It wouldn't. Man. It wasn't. It wasn't. No doubt about it. Hey, that. look, look, look. I, I'm, all, I'm sending now. There we go. There we go. All right. That's a start. <laughs> That's a start. That's a start. But, uh, but yeah, man, you know, I mean, that's bad news, you know, about Julius Randle. But yeah. uh, the Knicks, you know, they, they – and it felt like at the beginning of the game, it felt like – well, at least maybe, maybe – and maybe it personally just because I knew, you know, uh, uh, you know, about Randall, everybody knew about Randall, so maybe it was just me. I felt like, man, you know, they 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 they, they playing depressed because they heard the news about Randall, um, and I felt like it was transitioning into the game. But then, in, you know, in the second half, they really did turn it on, and you know, just start yeah. playing great defense. You know, the offense started to click, and you heard Tom Thibodeau. You know, when TNT they they showed him, he said. Uh, you know, uh, play defense, get your defense right. Play defense, get your defense right. The offense will come, and that's exactly what happened tonight. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's exactly what happened tonight. Josh Hart, big game for Josh Hart tonight. You know what I mean? Uh, 31 points for Josh Hart. I think that's a career high for Josh Hart. Is it really? I think so. I think that might be a career I mean, I high I wouldn't be Josh shocked Hart. that's not his role. So I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah. yeah, you know, big game. 31 points, nine rebounds, eight assists for Josh Hart tonight. You know what I mean? And and listen, Josh Hart is really going to have to make himself a big part of this offense. He's not going to score 31 every night. He's not going to score 20 every night. But we're going to need a consistent 15 to 16 points from Josh Hart every time he's out there on the floor. You know what I'm saying? How, however he's going to get it. You know, because the Knicks, because now you can, you can fully just say, all right, we got to fill in for Julius Randle. Before it was like a holding pattern. Now you really got to fill in for him because you know he's not coming back. And I think that does make it easier for the players to be able to fill in because they know he's not coming back. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, you know, so, guy, you know, you, you got to get your 15 or 16 from Josh Hart. 
Dante DiVincenzo's got to give you 20 plus. He's the second best, you know, he's the second scorer on this team. You know what I'm saying? We need Bogdanovich to be to be able to give you 15 points a game, 12 to 15 points per game. You know what I'm saying? Alec Burks. Anything. <laughs> I, you know, take him out the lineup. Maybe. And, yeah. and see if somebody else can do something. I don't know. He's not doing anything. Hey, you know hey Sam, real quick. So for me, yeah, Sam, yeah. I don't know how you feel about this. Go ahead. And then after this, I'm getting my man Trey. Actually, I'll, I'll wait, Sam. You can get Trey on. I know you've been right. waiting. Yeah, that, that way you can formulate what you're going to say so you don't have to say it three times. <laughs> Trey, what's popping with you, brother? How you feeling? Hey, Sam, I'm feeling good, man. Uh, how's right. everything? I'm feeling good, bro. Feeling really good. Really good. Really good. That's what's up. That's what's up. Big Bob, what's good, man? He can hear you. He just, off, you know, man. that's just um, Big Bubba. He could hear you, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> um, listen, first things first, man. Um, thoughts and prayers to Julius Randle. Yeah. No um, I think it's the right decision to get the surgery. I don't know if you guys caught this during the broadcast, but this was like coming into the third quarter. Um, Chris Haynes was reporting that he spoke to Randall earlier in the day and confirmed that um, Randall actually re-aggravated the shoulder four or five weeks ago while he was, you know, going through the rehab and, you know, going through contact and stuff. So, um, so, you know, there's that, I mean, I don't know how much you, you know, folks want to believe in that or not, but that that was something that kind of caught my interest a little bit that I thought was, um, a bit intriguing right there. Um, all this time, I just thought that the Knicks were kind of just keeping things close to the vest, you know what I'm saying? You know, kind of making the opposition think that there was a chance that Randall could come back, you know, to kind of give teams something to think about, you know, as we kind of head into the playoffs and things like that. But right. um, I'm, I'm glad he's opted to get this surgery, do the right thing, um, rest up, and, you know, kind of look forward to next season. And, you know, I think the Knicks have some big decisions to make in regards to that because, you know, this is going to be a big off season for the Knicks if they want to, you know, try to improve the team. And I know Julius has been in trade talks for, you know, about a year now, but now with the surgery and, you know, him being down. I, I think bit, we could do the trade um, talks, but I don't, I don't think know that's, that's on the table anymore. Oh, 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 oh. Say, say that again, Trey. No, I, w- I was saying that um, the Knicks have some big decisions to make as far as the offseason goes, because I think everybody's anticipating that the Knicks are going to make that big, you know, splashy move this offseason. But I think with the injury to Randall, I-, I don't know how that, you know, affects their decision making as far as trying to improve the team this offseason. Yeah, uh, I mean, B- Big Bubble was just saying, you know, you could probably assume that Randall's not getting traded. You know, uh, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, you know, the value's down right now. Right, he's he's coming off an injury, so I would I would think that um, you know he's not going to go anywhere. But who oh, knows also- if the Knicks still have him as a trade chip? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I, and I'll be honest with you too. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. I'll be honest with you. I don't think the Knicks are considered him a trade ship. I think they consider him a, a sad cornerstone because Kev. I think he's a, a main piece <laughs> because, I mean, they're going to go. Because they talked about it earlier, I think, today. With Randall, OG, and Brunson, they were 15 and 1. Yeah. 14 and 2. Yeah. yeah. Or 14 and 2. 14 and 2. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, you had a point where. That's a lie. The Knicks want a good pay. The Knicks want a good pay to win like fifty seven games with with all of them guys there. Um, I, I again, I, and pe- again, I'm gonna say it. People know how I feel about Randall. I don't think he's going anywhere. I don't think <laughs> I'm so be either. Really honest with you. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't think, think so good. either. Either. I mean, obviously, you know, anyone can get traded. There's no doubt about that. Anybody can get traded. Yeah. Anybody in the yep. league can get traded. Uh, but I, I think that the Knicks look at Randall as. I think they they looking. I think they're looking at him with, the, especially with the way that he was playing in January. And I think they're counting and saying, "This is the Randall that we will have with this basketball team." Uh, I think they want to add a third piece. That's why I think they're going after Donovan Mitchell this summer. 
uh, you know, you know, I'll, I'll do a whole nother show on that. We, but you know, we've talked about it a bunch. So I don't, you know, yeah. I think any trades is gonna, you know, is gonna be Bogdanovich and, and draft picks because Bogdanovich makes twenty million. Bogdanovich draft picks, you know, and other other parts. You know what I'm saying? Mitchell Robinson could right. be in trade talks. You know what I mean? I, uh, I, so yeah. I'm, I got a whole thing about Mitchell Robinson. I, I that's a whole different video, but I, I don't see him being here this after this year. But we'll, we'll talk about that yeah. another video. You know what I mean? Uh, the, 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 what I think this impacts is I hate, I hate to say it like this, but it could, you know, as, as in some way it could maybe even benefit the Knicks. You know, and, and I hate that I said that, but, um, you know, next season, Randall can opt out of his contract. You know, yeah. something like this could potentially impact the amount of money he can command, right? Because they can look right. and say, well, you know, look, the last two years, you were ineffective in the playoffs because of injuries. You know what I mean? So, you know, it could, it could, it could, it could impact that for Randall. You know what I mean? So that's not a good right, thing for Randall. Right. You know, uh, maybe the Knicks beat him to the punch, maybe. and maybe do like a midseason trade just to make just to say, "Hey, we got something for him," right? Instead of losing him for nothing once yeah. that time comes for him to opt out. Yeah, I, I don't think I don't. Yeah, I mean, it would be it would be towards the end of next season or, or like the trade deadline next season or something like that. But I think. It's going to be more of, uh, I mean, I think Randall's going to opt out, um, or whenever the opt out is. Maybe it's not next season. It could be the season after that. Whenever right. the opt out is, I think Randall's opting right. out. Jalen Brunson is also going to opt out. Both of those guys are going to opt out to try to get more money, yeah. I believe. Um, you got to pay these guys. And then Donovan Mitchell. Actually, uh, the reason why I think they're going to try to make a push for Donovan Mitchell is because all of them would be under contract next season. And then at the end of next season, I think it is, uh, they would all be able to opt out. And then the Knicks would be able to, yeah, at the end of next season, they would all be able to opt out. And then the Knicks would be able to sign all three of them at the same time for the same type of, for the same length of contract. You understand mm, what that, I'm saying? So, so it all kind of coincides because they all have an right. opt-out clause for 24-25. And that's the reason, you know, at the end of 24-25, they all, all three of them have an opt-out clause. And that's the reason why I think right. the Knicks are going to make a push for Donovan Mitchell. Uh, so Randall's going to opt out. Brunson's going to opt out. You know, then for 20, right. then for 25-26, they'll be playing under a, and, or the, or maybe, and, and that's one of the reasons why I think they make a push for Donovan Mitchell, because if they get all three, the Knicks may be able to say, if all three of you opt in for 25-26, we can really make some moves and then get you your money starting 26-27, and then they extend right. them from 26-27 going forward. You know what I mean? So yeah. uh, you know, there, there's a lot of ways that the Knicks can, can play this game, but... Uh, you know, for Randall having to get surgery, it could possibly maybe hurt how much he can command from the Knicks. But I, I, I do mm -hmm. think the Knicks are going to re-sign him. Right, right. Yeah, and then you got to think about the other guys too. Yeah, you got to think about Hardenstein. You got to think about OG because OG can opt out this off season. And you know, like we talked about, fourteen and two, fifteen and two in the month of January with him in the lineup. So. I mean, the Knicks already see how valuable he is to the roster. They want to take care of him as well. Yeah. I was just I was just about to say that. So I, I'll say this too about the OG. This hurt him. I think this hurt him getting his money, the money he wants. I think the Knicks have more control over what OG is and more control of the contract. Because you have you have you know OG is probably going to try to come out and say like you know the fourteen and two, but we're going to counter that and say, hey, you've been injured. I mean, to be fair, I, I love OG for what he does for this team, but we got to call a spade a spade. He's an injury prone player. How much can you really truly invest in him? Because I mean, right now, every I think every season he's been injured. Yeah, I, of his career. Listen, I mean, the, the Knicks the Knicks are going to invest in him. Is, is they they traded no, no, they, they, the they, they no, traded the R J and quickly they are going to re-sign OG they're going to invest in him yeah. there's no doubt about they that and I think it's going to be at a cost that I, I think it's going to be at a cost that we like yeah 
Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. It should be. But yeah, they they they, they are going to uh, invest in OG. They're going to invest in OG, Randall, Brunson, and whoever this other guy coming in. Who they try I to think it's Mikel Bridges. I think it's Mikel Bridges, but well, I mean, you know, we'll, know? we'll see. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But they're gonna invest in those guys, and when they get that third, when they get that guy, that third guy, whoever, uh, then I think they're gonna say, "All right, you know, we got a champion." You know, they're gonna put some teams around, and say, "We got a championship team." That's what I think they're gonna. You know, I don't see the Mikel Bridges thing happening though. Mikel that's, Bridges I mean, is kind of he's that's kind of a, rival. That's yeah. that's in the same city as you. I, right. I just don't see the Brooklyn people, you know, looking at the rival, you know, across the river and saying, "Hey, we're going to trade our best player to you guys." I mean, that's. Well, I mean, I, I would honestly well, I say that's think, a viable offense for those guys. Well, no. To be honest, I don't think so. My thing is, I know they're not going to they're going to trade to the Knicks. They're never going to trade to the Knicks. Like I know that for yeah. like I, that's yeah. almost a guarantee. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm more of I'm more of a I think I think his contract is over Who? in 2025. Who? Who? Mikael Bridges? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I, me personally, I, I I see Mikael Bridges and OG kind of being. You know, it's either one or the other. I think they're looking for a different kind of guard. You know, when it when it comes to that next guy, um, you know, I think him and OG are you know kind of the same thing, and I don't know if they're going to fit in the lineup together. Maybe it's possible. I don't, you know, we'll see. But I, I think they're cool with OG, and they're looking for something else at the at, at the shooting guard spot. Probably that's my thought process on it. But we'll see, Trey. What do you think about tonight's game, though? This was a big, um, big, big win. This is a big win for them. Um, I thought going into it with the news about Randall, and, and quite frankly, now that I kind of think about it, I think the Knicks themselves knew that, you know, this was a possibility. I know Josh Hart um, alluded to it last week. So I didn't think them coming out and playing the way that they did in the first half had any, you know, reasoning that it was because, you know, their, their minds was on Randall not coming back. I just think that the Kings, you know, kind of going back to that first matchup with the Kings, you know, we went in there and, you know, we, we, we kind of bludgeoned them. And I thought that they came in with the game plan mm-hmm. um, to slow down Brunson. And they did that. They, they double teamed, you know, right before he, you know, crossed half court. They did some things yeah. differently than they did the first matchup. You right. know what I mean? So, And, and, and you um, know, they did, they did something – they did it opposite of Tom Thibodeau, right? I usually, yeah. you know, Tom Thibodeau normally goes to that, uh, you know, guard trapping in the fourth quarter, right? You got a guard that's killing you, and then he'll go to that guard trapping in the fourth quarter. Sacramento, they came out and they did it early in the first quarter. Yeah, they gave it, yeah. they gave it away. Now you can't do it anymore, right? So you, you can mm-hmm. understand where Tom Thibodeau does it in the fourth quarter. Me, I kind of feel like you, you know, you do it intermittently throughout the game, and then now they can't really figure out when you're going to do it, when you're not going to do it, so they're always guessing, right? And so you can maybe take that guard out of their rhythm. I felt like they did it really early in the game and tried to really take the Knicks out the game early. Brunson still ended up with 35 points Yep. tonight. Yep, and and Josh Hart with almost another triple-double, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I think Sacramento – I think they went to it too early. I think I guess they figured they were just gonna uh, uh, crush the Knicks early, take them out, and and that was gonna be the game. Yeah. You know, it was a good game plan though. I mean, I, if if I was Mike Brown, I I mean, I'd probably do the same thing and just rely on your your stars to close out. And you know, De'Aaron Fox had a bunch of turnovers. Um, you know, we kind of frustrated some bonus again, and you know, also too. Um, they're missing Malik Monk, and Malik Monk is a big part yeah. of what they do offensively. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they don't have another guy that can, you know, replace Malik Monk. I mean, they, they put the kid Ellis out there, and, you know, we did a good job the first half, but we kind of contained him in that second half. So, you know, I think that's a big difference for, you know, the Kings losing this game also is not having Malik Monk and not having that guy – 
that can take the pressure off the of De'Aaron Fox. So, yeah. um, but again, I, I thought the game plan was, you know, for them was good against the Knicks. It's like you said, they did it. They did it early to try to, you know, take us out the game. But the stars for Sacramento didn't show up, and thus, you know, we were able to stick around, and you know, we finally, you know, held on for the win. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. How, uh, before I let you go, Trey, how much pressure is on Julius Randle now? I mean, I'm sorry, on uh, Jalen Brunson now. Um, it's 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 a lot of pressure. Um, and I'm looking at the box score. I'm looking at these minutes that the starting five is having, and you know, and I understand it. I mean, we're in a tight race in these standings. We're trying to get home court advantage. We're not even out of the possibility of getting a play-in spot. Um, I definitely don't want to be in that play-in spot. So I, I understand that Tibbs has got to put his best out there. Um, but we, we definitely need some more productivity from the bench. Um, however that rotation is, however combination Tibbs decides to use it. But, yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot of pressure on, on Jalen Brunson. Um, question for you, Sim and, yeah. and Bob. Um, does does the expectations of Eastern Conference Finals now go away because we're not expecting Randall to come back now, or is the expectations the same? Uh, expectations change for me drastically. Yes. Same, same uh, for me. Uh, the expectations uh, yeah. change for me too. Yeah. Uh, they they change for me because you know I feel like you know the style of play the Knicks have is right now is very perimeter oriented. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, without having Julius Randle, you know you you don't have a choice but to be perimeter oriented. And I feel like when you get into the playoffs, I, I just I, it just you gotta have you can still be perimeter oriented, but you gotta have some kind of inside presence. And when I'm saying inside yeah. presence, I don't mean just points in the paint. You know, you can score points in the paint by, you know, scoring on a fast break. You know what I mean? I'm not talking about right. points in the paint. I'm talking about someone who can get down inside, uh, make the defense collapse, and then, right. you know, be, a, be able to kick the ball out to open shooters and, you know, and, and add that threat. We don't have that threat right right now with this team. Everything is pyramid-oriented. You know what I mean? And yeah. Jalen Brunson, he does get inside the paint. Sometimes it's a little tough for him to find the kickouts because of his size. You know what yeah. I mean? Uh, so mostly he's going to score in the paint. But, but but still, you need more than one guy that can do it. You know what I mean? Uh, you yeah. Know, you, need, you know, when Julius Randle was there, the Knicks normally touched the paint on every possession. You know what I mean? Uh, Randle's touching the paint. Brunson's touching the paint. You know, now, you know, it's not every possession. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of... Uh, off the dribble threes, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying. Um, yep. You know, co- you know, threes coming off screens. You know, just a lot of threes being shot, and you know, it's the, it, right now it's the, one of the Knicks' best weapons, though. So, you know, you can't blame right. them for doing it. You know what I mean? So, I, I think it, it significantly changes. And when the playoffs, when you get into the playoffs, and defenses really do tighten up, uh, teams are grabbing and holding and scratching and all kinds of stuff. You know what I mean? It, it becomes that much more difficult to score. You know, the I, the perimeter game is going to be tougher. There'll be some games that the Knicks play really, really well and score a lot of points, uh, but it's going to mm-hmm. be tougher. And, and, you know, you're just missing that presence, and we have no way to duplicate that presence. Okay. Yeah, I'll temper, I'll temper my expectations just a little bit, but I feel like I still want to hold on because of how the other teams in the conference look. Like Milwaukee, still there's still something missing with Milwaukee. I mean, you saw the other night them losing to the Grizzlies. They lost to the Wizards a couple nights prior to that. There's something not right with Milwaukee for some reason, and I still feel like if we do get OG back, that I kind of like our chances a little bit there. Like I feel like it's an even kind of matchup with the way the Bucks have been looking, and then with the other teams, you know, Cleveland. You know, Cleveland's got some problems. Um, Orlando is a young team, and I know they, you know, got the edge over us in the regular season, but I feel like in a playoff situation, we got the experience to take them down. Um, Indiana doesn't play defense, and, you know, I know the Sixers got Joel back, 
and we'll see how far up they can move in the next you know week and a half. Yeah. But I feel like everybody besides Boston has got flaws, including us, including the Knicks. Everybody's got flaws, and I feel like any one of them teams, including us, can get beat. It's really a toss-up for who can get to the conference finals at this point, I think. Okay. All right. All right. Um, uh, no, nah, I, I feel you. You know what I mean? When you, and, and when you look at Milwaukee, Cleveland, yeah, definitely. I mean, the Knicks can pro- – there's a chance that they can still get there. There's, there's definitely a chance. Now, yeah. their best chance, let's put it like this, though. If the Knicks are in the fourth or fifth seed, they're probably oh, forget it. You forget it. They're, they're, yeah, they're probably forget it. going out in the second round because they're going to play Boston in round two. Yep, yep. If they get past round yeah. one, they're playing Boston in round two. Right? So yeah. the Knicks' best um, chance, the Knicks, with or without Julius Randle, the Knicks' best chance was to be in the second or third seed. Yeah, get the two, three seed, and if, you know, somehow you fall to the six and kind of hang on, I mean, being in that six spot is not a bad spot either. The six spot may not be a bad spot either because now you're, now you're playing, uh, who are you playing? You're playing the third seed? You're, probably, you're playing the Cavs. You're playing the Cavs, you get, you get right? the Cavs yeah, in the know, first round. Right, falling to that six spot may not be a bad spot because then you're still, you're not on the same track as Boston, right? Right, you want to avoid Boston until you have to play them in the conference yeah. finals. Yeah, you know, so. they, yeah. So, um, can we worry about winning our games first? Yeah, no, definitely. We got to worry about winning the games. I mean, listen, if if I'm Tom Thibodeau, I'm not saying, hey, we're gonna we're gonna drop down to the sixth seed. You're obviously not doing that. You know what I'm saying? Because that right, sets a bad right. precedent. I'm just we're just speaking as fans here right now. If you're Tom Thibodeau, you just got to focus on winning basketball games. Yeah, that's it. You just got to focus That's on winning it. basketball I mean, what are we, games. Like a game and a half from the two seed. You know, two yeah, games from the two seed, are, something like that. We're a half game behind Cleveland for that third seed. Yeah. Two games out of the second seed. And yeah, we'll, we'll have a chance to, to play. We'll have a chance to play Milwaukee and knock them down. Yep. You know what I'm saying? We got to play good basketball. We got to win. You know, right now, you know, we got to see if we can find a way to leapfrog Orlando. You know what I mean? And then. We don't get a chance to play Cleveland again. Yeah. Right? So we got to, you know, we play Chicago next, and then we play Milwaukee. Mm-hmm. We play Chicago like three times. Right? And 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 Milwaukee. We play the Bulls three times, and the Bulls are locked into a playing spot. They're locked so. into a playing spot. Um, now, they're still, they still want to hold on to that ninth seed and not drop down to the tenth seed because then they get – at least that one game is home, would be home in Chicago, right. you know? Right, right, yep, yep. So, I'm going to uh, be real with you. So every okay. team in the Eastern Conference that we're, I mean, every team that we're facing uh, these last six games, they're playing for something. Yeah, yep, everybody. Everybody's playing for something, you know what I mean? By the time mm-hmm. we get down to the last two games, Chicago may not be playing for anything. Brooklyn won't be playing for anything. Boston may not be playing for anything. By the time we play Boston Facts. on April 11th, right? Yeah, I mean, Boston yeah. really doesn't have to play for anything now. They're so far ahead of anybody no, in the Eastern they Conference. Clinched, they already clinched um, home court right. throughout the playoffs, like right. throughout all. You know, you, know, you know, so by the time we play Boston on April 11th, you know, they probably, they'll probably just be, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll ha- probably have some guys sitting and resting. Yeah. I mean, best case scenario, five and one down the stretch here. Yeah. You know, if, if I mean, if we can, I mean, if we can find a way to run it, that'd be beautiful. Yeah, that'd be beautiful. Yeah, I'm, I'm, and, and, and meanwhile, a, meanwhile, you got Cleveland out on the West Coast, and they're struggling out on the West Coast. They only beat Utah, and they got blown out by Phoenix last night. So, right. and they got the Lakers coming up, and I think they got the Clippers coming up. Right. The the, the thing Listen, is, I'm Orlando. Be real with Orlando. I'll take four and two. Yeah, I mean, you know, the thing is, Orlando though. Right, Orlando. Uh, they yeah. play. They play Charlotte tomorrow. Probably a win. Then they play yeah. Chicago. That's going to be a, a, a battle. They play Orlando. I mean, I'm sorry. They play Houston on April 9th. That's you know, a tough one. You know, it, it is a tough one. That's a tough one. Yeah, um, Houston got something to play for. Yep, 
Houston got something to play for. Then they play Milwaukee on April 10th, just before Milwaukee plays us. So Milwaukee, sh no, I'm sorry. At this point, who knows where we'll, Milwaukee will be, but uh, they played Milwaukee twice in the last three games. Their last three games mm. could potentially be really tough. They played Milwaukee, Philadelphia, Milwaukee. This is where we may Ooh. have a chance to leapfrog them. Orlando. Matter of fact, right. the last four games might be pretty tough. The last five games, because Chicago's playing for something. Houston's playing for yep. something. Milwaukee will probably, matter of fact, Orlando may be battling Milwaukee for that second seed. Orlando mm -hmm. and Philadelphia, that's going to be, you know, they're. Yeah, Philly. Philly's got to stay yeah. out of the play in somehow. Joel, yeah. right. you remember, Jolie's got to get. So he's got to get his groove back so you know he's playing yeah. the rest of these games. So, you know, Orlando can have a tough battle down the stretch where the Knicks, you know, they they could have a little bit of an easier schedule depending on who's playing. Right. Yeah, so. But like you said, Boston will have some stuff locked up already. Well, yeah. they got stuff locked up already. So, I mean, essentially, they could just sit everybody these last this last week and a half for real. Yeah, so, yeah, all right. Uh, Trey, I appreciate the time, man. Thank you for the patience, too. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, no problem, man. Hey, we, um, hey, you, you think you're going to get that sweet, man, for playoff game? Uh, I'm working on it. I'm definitely working on it. Um, 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 you know, uh, I plan on tomorrow evening. I, got, I have a class that I have to do tomorrow from 9 o'clock to 5, and I do it Saturday from 9 o'clock to 5 as well. Uh, but tomorrow evening, I plan on putting out uh, uh, something so that people can pay, you know, begin to pay early, you know, so, so they can start to, you know, make their payments on the suite. Obviously, we don't know. Uh, we don't know who we who we would be playing or what the dates or anything like that are. We don't know anything like that. That's that's right. The, we don't that's know anything yet. So basically, right. people would be making the payment. And if it doesn't work out, we could refund the money. You know, it'd be something like that. But it's going to be it's going right. to be about five. 30 per ticket somewhere around there. We, you know, kind of priced it out already. Um, uh -huh. You know, they, they, I tried to see if we can do just regular group seats, just seats in the regular, the seats, but this, they, they told me they don't do uh, group seats, regular seating for the playoffs, only the lounges. You can only do a lounge gotcha. for the groups. Yeah. All right. No, that's a bet. That's a bet. I want to yeah. bring the family this time around. So, okay. Okay. Ooh, and um, you gonna, you my, gonna my come, you gonna come, to, come to the game. Man. Say that again, Trey. No, nah, I was saying um, my my son who loves the Knicks. He's he's nine years old. He he wants uh -huh. to come to a game. Yeah. yeah. So okay. I told him I told him I would take him to the garden one day. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Well, you know, I'm, I'm definitely gonna put out the um. You know, How about you, you know, do the, have the, the down the payment for the suite, man? Then I'll give you money back. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a do, I'm, a, I'm definitely gonna do the prepayment thing, so uh, we'll be looking for that like tomorrow night, tomorrow evening. All right, no doubt, yeah. no, no doubt. doubt. All right, Trey, I appreciate it, bro. All right, y'all. All right, no doubt, man. Y'all have a big night. Peace. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, it's a big win by the Knicks tonight. Uh, you know they definitely needed that win. Stop, snap the three-game losing streak. Uh, you know, they're, they're in the fifth seed right now, but there's definitely a potential for them to move up to the third seed. They were led in scoring by Jalen Brunson, 35 points, 11 assists for Jalen Brunson for everybody who gets mad at him for not being a facilitator and all of that stuff. He had 11 assists tonight. Two rebounds, shot 60% from the field, 40% from the three-point line, 90% from the free throw line. Beautiful game for Jalen Brunson. Uh, Josh Hart, 31 points, not his career high. Somebody reminded me, reminded us that he had 44 points in Portland. All right, but big game from Josh Hart tonight. 31 points, 9 rebounds, 8 assists. 21 points from Dante DiVincenzo. We're going to need this scoring from these guys for the remainder of this season and the playoffs. 12 points from Deuce McBride. Deuce has been playing beautiful basketball. Just love what Deuce is doing out there on the floor. Bogdanovich, 12 points tonight. The Knicks are going to need Bogdanovich. Tom Thibodeau's got to use Bogdanovich more. He's got to figure out ways to get Bogdanovich into the offense. I know maybe he has some concerns about him defensively, uh, but he's a scorer, and the Knicks are going to need him at some point during the playoffs. Score for the to score. You know what I mean? Going to need him.
Spree, what's popping with you, brother? How you feeling? Sam, big Baba, I'm depressed. Uh oh. I just wanted to call in. I needed to talk to somebody. What's going on, you know, man? I got, depressed? I got the Randall news like five hours later than everybody else. I was so focused at work, and then I saw I was like, I took a step outside. I had to get away. You know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, it's tough news, no doubt about it. It's tough news, Spree. It's, did it's it take news. you like a couple hours? Like, what it was the, the when did it when when did you have you gotten over it? Or I mean, uh, I, honestly, somewhere in the back of my mind, I kind of thought he wasn't coming back. So yeah. I was, I kind of had myself prepared for it. <sighs> you know, I I just I kind of just knew like it didn't feel like it was gonna happen. Okay. I mean, I, I'm proud of the team. Like, I, for some weird reason, I felt like I needed this win, Sim, like, because I was in such a bad mood. And, and you know, I'm going to keep fighting with the team. We, I, I'm rooting for the team regardless, of course. Uh, you know, I'm not I'm – I'm a true fan, just like all of us. We're going to support the team. I just – they're going to have to change how they play a little bit now. You know? They're going to have to continue to shoot a lot of threes – hit Hart and Hartenstein in the short roll like they did tonight because in the playoffs, we don't have that many guys that can take people off the dribble. I'm going to need, like you just said, Bogdanovich is going to have to step up. He's, he's one of them. Yeah. He's one of them. Tibbs, Tibbs has to use him. Tibbs has to use him. Yeah. I mean, Hart has been playing well, you know, in the playoffs. We'll see. You know, you, you're going to have to play him. He's going to get the minutes, but we all know the the shooting component, but you have to play hard. He just brings too many things to the table. We're going to need McBride to continue to shoot it. Da, uh, Dante is going to have to shoot it. We just got to – the ball is going to move. I think Hartenstein also – he had nine assists tonight. They got to find yeah. ways to get yeah, Hartenstein in that little short roll. Even with Hart, like just they got to find ways to win because in the playoffs and what they're going to do is they're going to blitz Jalen Brunson a lot. Right. Uh, they are. They're going to blitz. But 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 you see tonight when they started, you know, they started figuring out, OK, they're blitzing Jalen Brunson. Josh Hart flashed to the middle of the floor. Jalen Brunson find Josh Hart in the middle of the floor. And now you got a four on two situation a, a four yep. on three situation. Right. Uh, and, and you cause the defense to scramble. You know, the Knicks are, you know, they're, they're seeing it. They got to figure out, you know, they they got to be, you know, it was pretty simple tonight. It'll be more complex in the postseason, the way that they, you know, try to double team Jalen Brunson. I mean, right now, like the Kings tonight, they double teamed Jalen Brunson pretty high out on the perimeter, yeah. which allowed – Brunson to find Josh Hart on multiple occasions in the middle of the court, rolling to the middle of the basket. You know what I'm saying? Uh, in the mm -hmm. playoffs, it's going to be more complex, you know, and, and teams are going to find different ways to send high traps to Jalen Brunson and disguise, uh, you know, disguise when the trap is coming, uh, disguise, you know, you, you think you got a guy rolling down the middle of the floor, but then someone else is, is coming there ready to take that out. It's going to be different ways to do it. Uh, but, uh, you know, they're seeing it right now, so they can better prepare for it. Yeah, I mean, I just I hear you, man. I, 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 we need OG back. Maybe OG, OG can at least give us a little bit some of the off-ball stuff, all, all the defensive stuff that he does. I'd like to at least get him back. Um, but I mean, the Randall thing is just depressing, Sam, because I wanted to personally see what this team was fully healthy. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think we will know. I, I don't think we're not going to know now. Well, we're not going to know and now. I think, and Randall's definitely coming back next year. He's going to be a Nick next season. Yeah. There's no, no doubt, doubt about, about that. that. He's going to be a Nick. No doubt about He's it. He's going to be a Nick. So he has to be a part of the court, even though I didn't get, I wasn't able to evaluate Julius Randall in the postseason this year. I have to accept the fact that what they did in January when they went 15 and two with OG, he's coming back to the Knicks, regardless of what moves are made this off season, he's coming back. So it is what it is. Injuries stink. Injuries yeah, just stink. That, that's all I have to say. Yeah, They do. They, they, they definitely stink, man. Uh, but you know, the, the Knicks know who they have right now. Uh, and, you know, they, they got to figure out how to be successful with this team right now. 
if, if the Knicks do uh, make it to the conference finals with this team, um, do you think Jalen Brunson uh, would get a key to the city or he, <laughs> Uh, he he probably he, you know he probably already has that. <laughs> oh, yeah, he mean? probably does. <laughs> he probably. I mean, it's not that. in. It's not. In, it's still not impossible. Like I still think there's a way. Well, it's possible. I think there's a way. It's I just possible. think it's harder. Yeah, it's possible. Uh, I mean, you know, when you talk about Cleveland, Orlando, you know, those two, you know, the Knicks can beat those teams as currently constructed. And I know, you know, people talk about Milwaukee with Doc Rivers, and that's. They still have a lot of talent, though, in Milwaukee. You know what I mean? Yeah. And 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 if you get in a if you get in the bracket where you have to play Milwaukee in the second round, as long as you get past the first round, but you know you you got to play Milwaukee. You're not just walking through Milwaukee. Can the Knicks beat them? Uh, yeah, they can. They got to play perfect basketball, though. I don't even know. Yeah, I'm with you. Like Milwaukee's going to be tough. Boston's going to be tough. I mean, Milwaukee's you know. not as good a defensive team as Boston, but I, I'm like at the point right now, Sam, especially with this Randall news, I'm at the point where I, I I'm not even caring about that anymore. Like I'm just I'm just focused on us and whoever it is 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 what it's going to be. If it's if it's we get through the first round, if it's Boston is the second round or it's Milwaukee, I, I'm not I'm I'm tired of playing thinking in my head who do I want to play more I'm just gonna let it be what it is no I feel you know? you. I feel you I feel you. I still don't want to play but I still want to get in a bracket that does not include Boston into the Eastern Conference Finals though because that you know I feel like you get in a, if you get in Boston's bracket right now the way the Knicks are constructed they're you know they, they'll put up a fight but they're probably losing you get in the bracket they that will doesn't pro- include I hear you. that they doesn't will probably include lose but I think I think we could rally them against Boston in a playoff series. It's a, I, I, even though yes, they're the number one seed, even though they, the talent they have, I know it's going to be tough, but I don't think it would be a sweep. I think we could push them still. Yeah. But I mean, you what know. do I know? Yeah. No, nah, I, I feel you. I feel you. Kevin said, I'm not yeah. ducking Boston is whack to try to avoid them. Look, if I'm the Knicks, I'm not, I'm just playing. I'm just trying to win basketball games. And wherever we end up, we end up. As a fan, personally, I'd rather not play Boston in the second round. I'm just telling you the truth. I'm with you. But let me ask you this one last thing before I go. Do you think it's possible? Uh, I'm just trying to dream and just, you know, before I hit the pillow tonight with Big Bubba. Is it possible for Jalen Brunson, if we do play Boston, to be the best player on the floor in that series? Is that possible or is that not possible? I think it's possible. I, I definitely think it's possible. Think um, it's possible. Especially when it comes to Jason Tatum, man. I'm I'm gonna be honest. I'm I'm one of the people that don't believe Jason Tatum's a superstar. Mm-hmm. To be quite honest with you, because he has too many if he games. You don't for me think to Jason considered... Tatum? You don't you don't think Jason Tatum is a superstar? <laughs> Where do you rank Jason Tatum in the league? Uh, I let me not say he's not a superstar. Come on, I just don't come on, think. Bubba. Come on, Bubba. Come on, man. Where do you have him, Big Bubba? Jason Taylor? I got him. He's a top 10 player hey. in the league. Yeah, he's top, top 15. 10. Huh? Top 15? He is he's top, top 10. 13. He's top 10. Easy. Come on. Come on. Come on, Isaiah. Come on. I think he's top he's 10. Good. I mean, it's debatable where. Debatable I think he's, where. if he's top 10, then he's on the lower end of 10. I, I'll give him 10. Yeah. Okay. No, I hear you. I hear you, but in one series, I, as in one series, is it possible for Jalen Brunson to outplay him? Is that possible? Yeah, oh, yeah it's, of it's possible. It's possible. It's possible. But who's outplaying Jalen Brown or KP? Right. Well, that's, right. Or no, Drew Holiday. That's, 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 that's the thing. Who's outplaying yeah. the other four guys? Right. I know. That's the, you know that's that's that right there. Well, to be fair, I don't think Porzingis has played the playoffs a lot. To be honest, okay. I mean, but he, you know, he's not. Listen, listen, listen. I'm just saying, you know, uh, uh, you know, I ain't gonna downplay Boston and how good they are. They're good. Yeah, they're good. I'm not gonna downplay how they're, good they are. They're good, but I think the Knicks' competitive fight. I'm not saying we beat them. I'm not saying we won't go down. I, I think we can. I'm not. I'm not willing to concede. I'm not willing yeah. to concede. No, nah, I feel uh, you. I, I just, neither the team. They're going to battle. 
So and, they, and, and, and Boston, they're going to know that they're in a fight. Yeah, they're yeah. going to have to earn it. They're going to have yeah. to. They're going to have to. They're going to have to earn it. We're going to have. We're going to make it physical. I'm just saying, you're right. I don't know about the other guys. Can Jalen Brunson be the best player in a series with guys like Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and all those dudes? I think he can. I think it's. I think it's possible. I think he can. I'm not, but sure. I, uh, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. Yeah, that's it. I think he can definitely be the best guy. You know, I, he probably can give you 35 to 40 a night. I agree. You know, yeah. We'll see what happens yeah. then. But yeah, I'm I'm depressed, but I I, I don't know what to say. I, I just. I, you, you, it seemed like you believe though you you kind of felt like this was coming, but I did. I, yeah. I just didn't feel like. I mean, I felt like I didn't want. I didn't want to believe it, Tim. I didn't want to believe yeah, it. I just, I just felt like if he was going to be back, he would have been back, and I, and I felt like they were probably banging on his shoulder and you know, you know, trying to see how much pain did he have, this and that, and, and he was still having pain. And at this point, it was like even if he stopped having pain, one good hit, it was going to probably get reaggravated. I just didn't. Yeah. I mean, Do you think he'll be with guys with that injury? Once he gets the surgery, is this? They say that once they clean that up next season, he's not going to have a problem with that anymore, right? I don't know. I I don't know. Okay. I, yeah, have no no real experience with it, so I don't know. All right. Yeah. All right, Sam. I, I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thanks. I'll talk no to doubt. you soon. Thanks, Big right. Bubba. Peace. All right. Bye bye. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Uh, I mean, hey, a big win tonight, though. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, the Knicks, they ended up playing good basketball tonight. You know what I'm saying? Despite the way it started, despite the news about Julius Randle, the Knicks end up playing really good basketball. Let's hope that they can duplicate it for the remainder of this season. You know, now, you know, every team that they play against, you know, there's going to be different matchups and all of that. But the Knicks got to come out with the same fire they had in the second half. You know, keep that fire, keep that desire, uh, and just play, you know, uh, they got to make every game scrappy. That's going to be their way to winning, right? Make every game scrappy. Uh, make every team leave out of there with bumps and bruises, believing and knowing that they were in a dog fight. You know what I mean? Uh, and 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 push the ball and transition. Let Josh Hart get out and transition the way that he does. You know, you know that's what the Knicks are going to have to do in order to win, you know, going down the stretch of the season and into the playoffs. You know, this team, I felt, with Julius Randle was really built for the playoffs, you know, with the style of ball that they could play, you know, with the defense, with the inside presence, with the ability to get to the paint, the ability to knock down the three. Uh, you know, we have a lot of those things now. We just don't have that ability to knock down, to, to, to get in the paint consistently, you know, to have Julius Randle dominating in the paint, that presence, that bruiser presence, you know. So it's going to be difficult. And you know, we'll see if we can find another way. You know what I mean? Uh, but the Knicks tonight out-rebounded the Kings 39-34. 39-35, they out-rebounded the Kings. 34 assists tonight for the Knicks, 26 for the Kings, 9 steals, 2 blocks for the Knicks, only 11 turnovers for the Knicks. They shot 55% from the floor. Uh, the Kings were 48.8% from the floor. The Knicks, 40, both teams, 42.9% from the three-point line. The Knicks only 69% from the free throw line, but the Kings only shot 58%. The Knicks had 60 points in the paint, uh, nine second chance points for the Knicks, 19 fast break points for the Knicks to Sacramento's nine. You know, so the Knicks ended up uh, re- winning in some key areas and obviously winning the basketball game. Uh, but don't let the points in the paint fool you. The 60 points in the paint, you know, you know that's fast break stuff. You know, what I mean, it doesn't mean that the Knicks are dominating the paint. You know, um, so they got to find other ways to do it offensively. You know, losing Julius Randle was a big presence. Much more pressure on. Jalen Brunson, you know, he's going to see a lot more double teams. Julius Randle took away not the ability to double team uh, Jalen Brunson, but the ability to make them pay for double teaming Jalen Brunson. You know, with the way the Knicks are now, with being perimeter oriented, you know, these guys got to be hitting every single night. They got to be scoring every single night. They got to be a threat every single night. You know what I mean? And then, of course, you know, we're small. We got what? Three six four guys in the starting lineup, and then Jalen Brunson is like six two. Yes, and I also thought yeah. I think that would be another reason for me to add Bogey to the lineup because I mean you you listen I mean we love Josh Hart, but Jesus man, we're talking about Josh Hart being a power forward. Yeah, 
Like, and I I get it, but I, I would add Boogie to the lineup just to get some some what up size on the lineup because it's bad right now. So I mean, we're talking about four of our starters being six five and under. Yeah. Yeah, but hey, you know this this you know I think Tom Thibodeau is going to stick with this lineup. So you know, uh, he'll 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 use Bogdanovich, I, I guess how he feels. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Now that they have the news, let's see if he settles in and they settle in and say, um, "All right, let's let's really figure out how to use this guy because he's a weapon." That's what I want to see Tom Thibodeau do. And you got six games left, whatever it is, um, to figure out how to utilize Bogdanovich the best. Because he is a weapon. He can score the basketball. He can shoot the mid-range. He can post up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? He can knock down the three. You know what I mean? Uh, how can we cover for him defensively? You know, that's going to be something that the Knicks are going to have to figure out. But, uh, yeah, I, I think they're going to have to try to figure out how to use Bogdanovich because he's definitely a weapon. You know? Yeah, big shout-out to Money Grip. Thank you for the super chat. I definitely appreciate it. He said, what's up, Sim and Big Bubble? I think we can make it far. If the team keeps it together uh, and play well, uh, let's go Knicks. I mean, I, there's a chance, like we've been saying, there's a chance they can make it to the Eastern Conference Finals, you know, if things go right. I think if they have to play Milwaukee in the second round or if they have to play Boston, it's really tough to get to the Eastern Conference Finals. Let's put it like this. If they play Boston in the second round and they beat Boston, that team can go to the finals then. The Knicks can go to the finals. Let's put it like that. If they beat Boston in the second round, the Knicks can go to the finals. If they beat Milwaukee in the second round, now you got to beat Boston in the Eastern Conference Finals, which is tough. You know what I'm saying? But if they beat Boston in the second round, and, you know that's a monster upset, in my opinion. But then you look and say, yeah, this team can go to these. This team can go to the NBA Finals. You know, um, can they beat Milwaukee in the second round? I, I think they could. You know, they got to play perfect basketball, almost. You know what I mean? Uh, they got to play that lockdown defense. They got to be able to score with those. You know, they got to be able to score the ball. Um, and, and, and let's hope that their lack of chemistry, talking about Milwaukee, shows up in the playoffs. You know what I mean? When things really start to clamp down, maybe that lack of chemistry will show up. Um, we'll see. Uh, you know, but the Knicks will have a chance. I, I still think they'll have a chance. And I still believe they believe they have a chance to get to the Eastern Conference Finals. I'm not just going to say straight up uh, they're going out in the second round or they're going out in the first round, you know. But I, And I do agree with Kevin right now. He said uh, the Knicks are not uh, – said we're not beating anybody without – anybody significant without OG. Yeah, 100%. We need OG. We need OG. So so with me saying these things, I'm assuming that OG is playing when I say these things. I'm assuming that OG and OB is Yeah, playing. me too. Yeah, I'm assuming he's playing. If if we don't have OG for the playoffs, we could be look we could be looking at a first round exit. I ain't gonna I mean we could win the first round too, but we could also be looking at a first round exit. You know what I mean? The Knicks need OG back. See, it's even a little how much more desperate are the Knicks now to get OG back? I, so I did see a notification that the Knicks were comfortable him not playing until the playoffs. Mm -hmm. But no, we need him because again, we we I know me and you are saying this with us thinking that OG is going to be back. So I think the Knicks are kind of desperate son, to have him back. I really do because you have to have you have to have this wing to guard these other wings in the playoffs, especially in the East. We got there's a lot of big wings, a lot of big forwards on the, on these teams, and you got somebody that, that needs to guard them. Again, Josh Hart can do all he wants, but OG is probably. I, I'm gonna say this: OG is the best perimeter defender in the East. So, yeah. you need that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I do. I, I think the Knicks really need, you know, they're desperate to get the. They need OG back. It's going to add to the rotation. Obviously, he's going to add defensively. He's going to give you something offensively. Um, they need OG back, especially if they're going to have a chance to do something 
in the playoffs, the Knicks got to have OG. They're desperate for OG to come back. You know, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we can get him back before the playoffs begin. Knicks got to hold fort. They got to hold fort. This team right now, they, you know, with the teams that they're playing down the stretch, they can, they can win. They got to hold fort, get OG back, and then, you know, gear up, be ready for the playoffs. Yeah. Six games left, son. Six, Six games, games left. left. Six games left. Six games left. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate your time. Uh, you know, Tony is recovering from surgery. Uh, so, you know, when 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 he's back, we'll get back with the with the losers lounge and and, and everything. But he's recovering from surgery, so uh, you know you know prayers up for Tony. You know, I think he's good, but uh, you know he he's he's in recovery right now. You know I mean, uh, I appreciate your time, folks. Again, tomorrow evening, look forward to some information about playoff tickets and stuff like that. A playoff lounge, okay. Uh, look, look, look forward to that information. And yeah, we're up out of it. Any last words, Big Bubba, before we break up out of here? I'm not gonna lie to you, Sam. I'm happy I didn't fall asleep. I ain't even gonna lie to you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. But man, it felt it felt good to be back, Sam. Miss talking to my family, man. I miss the NBK family. Well, I miss you. I was with y'all when we went to the game, but I miss coming on the chats, hanging out, joking, man. Yeah. But, like I said, I'm definitely trying to come back more. My schedule is getting more controlled, more, you know, I know what days I'm going to be off and stuff. So. Yeah, yeah. Basically, basically what he's saying is his girl is getting a little bit more lenient. Yeah, that's all That's all he's saying. She's getting a little bit more lenient and all of that. You know, she tight. She loosened up the schedule. She loosened up the schedule a little bit. She gave him a little bit more leash. That's what he's saying. He's trying to, you know, he uses some funny words to get around it, but yeah. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> that's what he's saying. Right he, I'm just telling you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> no, bro, listen, man. My boss, my actual boss. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to leave that up to interpretation. Uh, you we know, know who the boss more. is. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, it's giving me more free time, but now nah, I'm going to try to get back on more, man. But yeah. I mean, like I said, good win tonight, man. We got six six to go, Sim. We had a, we had a, we had a, Interesting season, man. But uh, six more, six more regular home games, man, and then we're, we're on a popping. Yeah, no doubt, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate the time. We're out of here. Peace. This is NBK, nothing but Knicks. When Sim passed the assist, you know that it's number one show that breaks down the game. If you can't play defense, stay out my way. Dribble the ball, come down the lane. Five seconds on the shot clock. Who gon' win us the game? You want to hear Nick updates and trade rumors, post-game reviews, this the place you tune in. So tell a friend just to keep the ball moving. Like the page if you're feeling the movement. Every game we come in to win. Give us a sob like a player that came off the bench. This is NBK, nothing but Nick.